For my sins, I am a faculty, faculty TLL, which is Teaching and Learning Leader at Blackburn School for Girls, but I just shorten that to Head of Faculty because it makes it a bit easier. Uh, and I have responsibility for design technology and ICT. Um, one of the things that uh, really got me uh, quite worked up about um, using various bits of software and got me involved in using open source software uh, was the fact that kids used to come to me and say, Sir, I'm, uh, can I have a copy of, and they would then list some commercial package, which I shan't mention, I, and can I have a copy of it to take home? And I'd have to explain that, no, I can't do that without risking a very large fine or going to prison or both. Um, and as I didn't really fancy either of those two things, um, it, 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 I realised that there was a need for something else, something that I could just give them. And so I started, event after a little while, and uh, with um, handing out disks full of free open source software, which were rather rudimentary to start with, um, which became a little bit more involved, uh, another disk-based project um, called the Open Education Disk, uh, which a colleague is, is primarily responsible for running and is available out there on the internet, and uh, is a great resource to be able to just give to kids and say, here you go. Take it away, take it home, you can do what you like with it. You can copy it, you can put it onto your computer, you can give it or put it on your mate's computer, you can use it as a drinks coaster if you really must. Um, but you, they can do pretty much what they like with it, legally, without having somebody come knocking on the door saying, you now owe us a large sum of money. And so one of those packages, Inkscape, was one of the things that I was quite interested to use, partly because I'm a design technologist, really. I'm really a woodwork teacher. I just slipped in quietly while no one was looking. Um, but um, I've, I've got involved in enough of um, graphics-based <laughs> software pr primarily, and I've used various CAD packages and various illustration packages, and uh, I came across Inkscape a little while ago and potted around with it, and I've potted around with it for quite some time. So I'm a kind of experienced <laughs> beginner, if you, if you like, with the use of Inkscape. Um, Inkscape is uh, one of the number of open source packages we've, we're running in the school. We put it into, the, into uh, open, there's a huge amount of open source software running at Blackfen. Um, I can't say it's all down to me. I wish it was, um, but it, we've had a lot of people who've been very keen on open source in the school for some time. And uh, it's primarily the network manager who is a, the absolute crucial person to actually believe in having something that you can run for free and it's actually worth having. Um, and he's made a huge amount of difference. Anyway, let's not. Let's click on the right bit. Uh, Inkscape, when you open it up, like any other drawing package, it looks. Well, it looks like this. Um, it's not really too nice on there, that's this one. And the usual number of tools, and you look at it and think, well, it's very exciting, I'm sure, as drawing packages go. There's quite a few useful tools on there, a lot, a lot of things that I would use. One of the things that I tend to use quite a lot of, being a, a woodwork teacher really, is I like to see things where we can do things with, with perspective drawing. One of the tools on there um, is, uh, allows you just to be able to start to create perspective tools uh, uh, or virtually instantly just to start to create everything and it, using two-point perspective. Um, you can actually take that a little bit further. And that, you can use that as a starting point and I frequently use that as a starting point um, for all sorts of lessons where we're working with graphics or we're designing some three-dimensional object. Is this a hard program to learn to use? No. Okay. no. Even I can use it. What age, I, what age children could you teach this to? Um, my children were wiping the floor with me, my own children, <coughs> when they were nine, uh, <laughs> using this, and um, they, they are advanced users, whereas I am still a beginner. Okay. Um, but yeah, they, they were using it at nine. They could probably have been using this at seven. <coughs> Um, quite easily. There's a number of, like all drawing packages, there's a number of tools on there, but you don't have to use them all. It's like you could have a thousand and one fonts on your computer, but you, nobody would seriously think about using all of them. In fact, I only use about four. Um, other tools on there, you can do some rendering, and the, there's various tools which we can use. There are filters that you can apply to things, so it can make it all look rather vitalism on the top there, I always could never see the point myself, or a marble effect here, sorry, awful jokes, my children nag me about those as well. Um, we can do kind of uh, gold, gold leaf splats and various other, there are all sorts, of the usual range of toys that you would find on most drawing packages, which you can use, but of course, it's, um, 
It's free, and you can use it wherever and whenever you want. The cost saving is an obvious one compared to the obvious proprietary alternative. Mm. Are there other reasons why one might use Inkscape rather than the usual vector graphics package? Um, you, you can, well, there's, there's quite a few yeah. out there, aren't there? Okay. Um, there's, there's a number of reasons that you can use it. Um, one of the things that we're exploring, as we're teaching, um, we're teaching OCR Nationals, we're also teaching computing, and where we're dealing with uh, web page design, we're tending to, uh, there's recent developments with HTML5, um, allow you to be able to import SVG vector graphics straight into web pages. Um, so it's one of the, the, the uses of this as a tool, and the native format of Inkscape is an SVG file, so you can take your graphics straight from your drawing package directly into a web page. Uh, and because it's a vector gra graphics file, it's infinitely scalable. You could scale it up a million times, and you're still not going to get down to those little blocky edges that you have on, it, any, on any bitmap uh, that you're going to get. You scale into the same extent, you scale into 1,000% on a, on a bitmap, and all you will see are little blocks, or rather big blocks of it at that point. Um, so that's one of the ways in which you can use it, and it means you can then start to have some very, very... Uh, clear graphics on web pages. It just give, it helps to give things a, a bit of an edge, uh, and then you can use that with CSA, CSS stuff, CSI. I was going to say. Um, there's a lovely little calligraphy tool which I uh, I drew with on with a mouse. I, I hate trying to draw with a mouse, so I, use, I prefer to use a, a pen. Um, but then that's down to the fact that I'm used to drawing boards and kind of old-fashioned stuff. And it can do all the usual things, as I say. It's got all the tools, things like star shapes and circles and rectangles and all the, all the stuff that you've, you've got on any, on any proprietary uh, similar kind of package. Um, so you can mess around with that. You can make star shapes and manipulate them and shape them very, very easily. As I, say, I, as I put my hand up to being a beginner, ex an experienced beginner, but a beginner all, all the same, um, you're not going to see any blindingly fantastic graphics from me. Um, you might see some from somebody else. You can fiddle around with the edges of things, and you can clone things and duplicate things. And what it does is it produces, uh, to, as with many drawing packages like this, you've either got a path, which is a line, or an object, which is a thing. Uh, an object. There's an argument that one should be training our students to use the industry standard application, that those of them who are going to pursue a career in graphics design, wouldn't it be better if they knew how to use the application that the industry uses for this sort of thing? How would you counter that? How would, you, would you justify Inkscape? I could justify Inkscape for a number of reasons. One is that I don't think we're here necessarily, education isn't about training, okay. it's about actually making sure that the skill set that we're going to use in the future is something that we can draw on and use, so we're learning how to learn as much the as we're learning how to do transferable skills that our friends at Ofsted talked about. Exactly, the transferable skills. And so we need to be able to use that. I mean, the things that I was learning to draw with, uh, when I started, I was using an Acorn uh, RISC OS 2 uh, and a Mac. Uh, I can't remember what version it was. I think it was, it was something on L2 or LC2. I can't remember. But it was a very, it had a tiny screen. All I remember it was, we were doing CAD work and we had this screen. It was about eight inches wide. Uh, diagonally, of course, and uh, you do part of your drawing, and you basically have to spend your time zooming around this large drawing area with this tiny little screen. Um, of course, nobody would use that now. Um, but uh, recently, well, recently, a year ago, I went to, I was involved in reviewing a uh, website for QCDA, um, probably the kiss of death that I turned up and did that. Um, but I walked into this uh, design studio in Soho and was taken by the web developers and they said, would you like, would like you to see this, um, this web, these web pages and this is how we structured it and this is the look and feel. And I noticed as I was going through their office that they, there were several of them who had Inkscape up on their screens. I said, oh, I, I mean, I'm interested to see that. I thought I would see a, another package, Adobe Illustrator or something similar. And I said, well, that's fine. Some of, some of us use that, um, but uh, we, some of us prefer to use Inkscape for a number of reasons, one of which is uh, it doesn't cost us £600 a seat every time we want to use it. So I think the industry standard argument holds, holds up to some extent. People are already yeah. using this commercially and using it to make money. 
you're getting that, I think, across the board in web design, where the industry standard is rapidly becoming a Linux space machine. You're going to very typically, which Alan's going to yeah. talk to us about later on. Yeah, so, yeah. absolutely. So it's um, the, 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 the industry, industry, well, the industry, I can't even say it. Industry Those standards, standards that's what, what they are, teachers think it is. They, they, it's what we think it is, but it's actually changing quite rapidly, and um, the industry, whichever industry it is, every industry has its own pre preferred option, let's be honest. Um, education has such a wide range of software, we, we, we can have any number of options, and so we're not limited in that way. Um, I'll just go through a couple of things. One of the things, you can take a, uh, an object and you can use it as a the spray can tool allows you to just kind of spray the same object all over the place, which to greater or lesser effect. But if you're doing some more sensible drawing, or pro proper drawing, as, I, as uh, my technical drawing teacher would have called it, um, <laughs> you can get grids up and you can start to do some, um, some more structured drawings uh, and use grids and measure and do various bits and pieces. So this, is, this, is, this was taken straight from a tutorial as I was sitting there and playing with it, and there's a huge range of tu tutorials on Inkscape's own website, um, and quite a lot of help from forums on there as well. Um, so we did a little bit of shading and tinkering with this one. Um, this, I can't claim, is mine. I just lifted this straight from Inkscape's website. Um, it's a screenshot of Inkscape being used to come up with a design for a logo. On Ubuntu and on a number of other Linux uh, distributions, um, a lot of the logos, a vast majority of the logos, I believe, are drawn using Inkscape. It allows you that precision that you get from a vector graphic, um, and yet you've still got the, the high level of and sophistication. And the graphic icon will work on the little button bar and up It'll on be, the desktop. It's great, tiny, you can fill the whole desktop Same with it. Thing, yes. um, this is another one that, again, somebody else has done. I can't put my hand up to this one. Shame. I wish I could, but I, I would be lying. It's um, astonishing to think of that vector graphics. Yes. Uh, it's not, that's not a bit map, um, and it's produced entirely using um, speed. So. This is a really nice example of an open source application that any of you guys could install on what I imagine is a Windows network at school and just use straight away as a way of doing vector yeah. graphics. <laughs> Are there other things like this? Are there other Windows applications? There are. Do you happen to have a slide for this? I do happen to have a slide for this. I'll just skip on quickly through that one. There we are. Um, there's a number of them. Uh, on the Open, open Source Schools website, there's a number of them listed on there. So if you're thinking, well, I will be able to write all these down. Um, and also, I think if at the end, are we going to make the slides available for everybody? Uh, no, we don't want any It's all proprietary. Not no. yeah, not Absolutely. So if you want a copy of, <laughs> yeah, of the slides, then come and slide. grab us, and yeah. I will just copy it straight onto a USB or, or whatever, and you can have those. Um, the different things. Mix is a it's, it's, for, it's for budding DJs. I, I don't tend to have as many in my current school, being the girls' school, as the one I had in before this September. There were I, 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 30, 40 boys who were mad on being DJs. They were convinced they were going to be the next Fat Boy Slim or Slim Boy Fat or whatever. I don't know. Um, I can't I can't pretend to be cool. I'm not even going to. Um, Audacity I use on a weekly basis. Uh, Audacity is a fantastic audio recording tool. Um, I use it every week. I use it to record notes, so I use it to record um, messages. If I'm working, as I'm marking kids' work, I tend to mark it with them, and so I'm telling them what they need to do. And as a way of reminding them, I put an audio note onto their, um, onto the virtual learning environment uh, with that piece of work, and it's it just, just a very quick way of doing that. So I don't have to, I write things down as well, but my handwriting's a bit of a scrawl. So um, as a way of them having that immediately there, it, it, so that I don't have to repeat myself and think, now what did I say? It's there it's re as we record it. It's also useful if you have to uh, discuss with kids uh, part of their coursework, I would include, um, we were putting together presentations as all our coursework on the product design course I was running, and we would have audio notes on there, which are recordings of, you know, now tell me about your project, how have you been getting on with it? And they'd talk their way through it, and they'd be using that. So I use that every week. It's fantastic. Juice is a podcast uh, download tool. It's very useful. Blender is for 3D graphics, and it can produce some stunning 3D images um, that are just beyond belief. And the idea that it's free um, it staggers me. Um, my son is very much into animation. He uses it an enormous amount. What was the name? Of it? Blender. Sorry, blend, blend, Blender. And also does very nice video editing. It does some very good, good video editing. Yeah. 
Um, you know, there are amongst the in, open source tools can occasionally have some really stupid names, and GIMP is one of them. Um, but it's I don't yes. Um, it's uh, a paint package, a bitmap uh, package that is comparable with a very good, well-known. Um, proprietary piece of software. Begins with the P and ends with shop. That's it, yes. <laughs> There's even a version called GIMP Shop for those of you who like, uh, which it, it allows you to be able to uh, use a very similar interface. If you used to use a Photoshop and you use uh, GIMP, it's got a very similar interface. Uh, it's called GIMP Shop. Um, and it's pretty much the same thing, it's just got a different UI. Uh, Pencil is a great 2D animation tool. I've used that um, with. Um, in my last school with 11 year olds and I've done a project with primary school and I've, they've had 6 year olds, 5 year olds I think occasionally, 5, 6 year olds using pencil to come up with uh, 2D animation, it produces flash animations and amongst other different formats, that's one thing I noticed about open source stuff, when you go to save as and you want to look at the file types you just go, oh my goodness there's all these, there's so many different file types you could save it as, whereas I know with proprietary stuff you, you get theirs and maybe one other um, just the Lego bricks and the interoperability. <coughs> very much so, yeah. The, the bits all fit together. Yeah. yeah. So pencil and hug in is a thing for stitching photographs together to make these huge kind of panoramic shots, and you can use them in some amazing ways. And you can even use it to photograph out there and just take all the people out, mm. uh, which is an acquired skill. I haven't, I can't say I'm particularly good at that one, but it's an interesting one. And a number of these are on the open education list. The, uh, ISO from which you can download yeah. from. So, if you want websites, you've got open source schools, um, you've got the open education disk, as I say, it's a, a, a downloadable, just, just over the, the, the capacity of a, of a CD. Um, so, it's a large download, but once you've done that, you can then duplicate it as many times as you want. And uh, on my, my website, which I'm now going to plug, freesoftwareforstudents.org.uk. Um, which came about, as, as I say, due to my levels of frustration. It's just so good. Thank you ever so much for that. Thank you. Day.